Welcome back to chapter seven and another example involving springs. So we have the words and picture from the slides. And so right away we can, after we, and you can pause the video if you need to, after we draw this picture into our notes, we can label the before situation where we are already pushed into a spring and not moving, we're going to be releasing it, and the after situation where we are at the top of the ramp and we're being asked to find the speed at the top of the ramp so we can even make a little note to ourselves that we are moving. All right, so let's draw our before and after table. This helps us organize all of our thoughts as we go through and ask and answer some straightforward, hopefully, straightforward yes or no questions about this situation. All right, so we're going to we're going to ask all of the before questions and then all of the after questions. Mix things up. <laughs> so in the before situation, we are pushed into the spring and then we're releasing it. Just like the previous example, the problem started after someone had already pushed in the mass and is waiting to just let go. So we are not moving in the same way that even if your foot is right on the gas pedal about to start accelerating from a stop sign, you are not yet moving at the start of that process. If we ask ourselves about gravity, the potential energy from gravity question is, are we higher? At the before picture, we're at the bottom of the ramp. We are not higher. And then for the spring, we ask ourselves, are we in contact with the spring? And certainly we are, one half kx squared. In the after situation, we ask ourselves, are we moving? Yes, we are. There's no question about that because that is the thing we are asking to solve for, one half mv squared. For the potential energy from gravity, we ask ourselves, are we higher? And we're at the top of that ramp, so we are indeed higher than we were at other points in the problem. And then here at the top of the ramp, we are no longer in contact with the spring, so we put zero there. Now note that at the bottom of all of this, well after all of the before and after questions, we ask about work. When we are asking about work, we are always asking where are there places where there's a force that could be acting to either give us extra energy like a push or a pull or take energy away like a friction or air resistance? And we are told about a friction force. So that should tell us absolutely there is a work term and it's because of friction. Because of friction. Now I just want to deal with the work term here uh, before we get into things because the work term in many ways is the most often missed part of these types of problems. Force in the direction of motion times the distance. And remember, you've heard me say this before, but this is the better way to think about it because it's the understanding and the underlying concept. From the book, we also have that work is F times D times the cosine of theta. However, the continued reason why this is a bad um, version to rely on if we do not understand it is because plenty of students, every semester I see this, plenty of students want to use this 30 degrees because it looks like an angle and this looks like an angle. But this is the angle between where the force vector is pointing and where the um, displacement vector is pointing. I know this says distance, but that's because this is at its heart a dot product from calculus between two vectors. That's why this is a better way to think about it up here where we have the full understanding um, built into the, the wording. In this case, we are going directly up the ramp, along the ramp, and friction is pointing directly down the ramp, along the ramp. So here, in this case, the angle would be 180 degrees. And the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. More useful to us, though, and I'm going to use red here to um, help us, the work term, 
the force in the direction of motion would be negative 5 newtons. Friction is acting directly against the motion. That's where that negative sign comes from. It would also have come from the cosine of 180 degrees. But this helps us understand why that negative sign shows up. The distance here is 3 meters along the ramp. 3 meters along the ramp. Okay, so now we go back to our standard um, process of writing energy before plus work added equals energy after. And I'll continue to say this, but the reason that it's so useful to write it every single time is to really train our brains that that's part of the process and that is the standard starting point. In the same way that we really should have been training ourselves to write F net equals MA in every single chapter four and chapter five problem. Then we plug in all of the terms that we have, one half KX squared, the work added term, I'm now going to put in what, I, what we've already done so far. So negative 5 times 3. And then we have the energy after. 1 half mv squared plus mgh plus 0. All right, so um, on the left here, the zeros will go away. We have 1 half. K is 4,500, x is 15 centimeters. So 15 centimeters, we need to train ourselves, is 0 0.15 meters. We're dividing by 100. We get 0 0.15 meters, and that gets squared. Negative 5 times 3 is minus 15. And then on the right side, we have 1 half times 2 kilograms, times V squared, V is what we're looking for, plus M, which is 2, times G, which is 9.8, times the height, which is here at 1.5 meters, 1.5. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug all this into my calculator. The entire left side is 35.6. Then 1 half times 2 is just 1, and we have V squared attached to that plus this whole thing in our calculators is 29.4. So if we subtract 29.4 from both sides, then we will get 6.2 equals V squared. And so, so that it's not at the very bottom, V is going to be the square root of this 6.2 value, or 2.49 meters per second. So we aren't going all that fast because friction was slowing us down um, as we went. So although this is a pretty powerful spring and it's been pushed in quite a bit, friction was stealing a lot of our energy out of the problem and so we end up with a fairly low speed at the top of this ramp. That's it. The um, major trick, I suppose, here is that we do have a work term as well as springs. This is the first example where that's true. But what we need to recognize is that we could have truly any combination of yeses and nos for these seven different things we're asking about, and that could be a question that you see. So we should never be trying to look for an exact match on the problem sets because it means we're not understanding how we are asking and answering these yes or no questions. So there is one last example for the chapter, which will also involve springs and one other sticking point that we address and deal with. Uh, and so I will see you in that last example video.